in a quiet suburban neighborhood. Young Timmy, only 11 years old, had been working tirelessly on his mysterious science project in his garage. Little did he know that his experiment would attract the attention of the police, who stormed in just in the nick of time. Timmy's parents were completely stunned when police took away their beloved 11-year-old son and his innocent little science project. At least that is what they thought he had been working on. But the police had discovered that something very different had been going on in their household. Timmy had been keeping a big secret from everyone. For the next couple of days, scientists were absolutely baffled by what Timmy had been able to create. They had never seen anything like this before and could not believe that a boy of his age, with no prior knowledge of this kind of chemistry, had been able to develop this. But Timmy had a secret that they were about to find out. When everything was finally revealed, Timmy's parents knew that their life would never be the same. They felt like they had failed as parents for not catching this earlier. But what had Timmy created with his science project? Why did the police get involved and in how much trouble was this 11-year-old boy? Before we start, smash the like button and make sure to subscribe if you haven't and hit that notification bell so that you won't miss any new stories. Ever since he announced to them that he was taking part in his school's science fair, they felt like theft almost had a completely different son most of the time was actually a very quiet kid. He did not have many friends and he did not really make an effort to make those friends. His parents had tried many times to get through to their Don and figure out what was going on in his mind. He was clearly lying to them and she did not want to expose him for that. Not before she figured out why he was doing this and how he had actually gotten all of this equipment. She was afraid that he might have stolen it from somewhere, but this did not turn out to be the case. Eventually, he admitted that he had been gifted all of these items by somebody online. One person in particular, who called himself Chemister, showed a particular interest in Timmy's ideas. They would send messages about the project for hours on end, discussing how to potentially improve it. Stephanie read these messages and noticed that it was mostly chemistry-making suggestions and Timmy agreeing. When Timmy told the online friend that he was going to take part in his school's science fair, the chemistry was as excited as he could be and told Timmy that he would send him a bit of his old equipment that he could use to help him with the project. In the heart of the college campus, Stephanie met Dr. Lewis. The sun filtered through the trees, creating a serene environment that contrasted with her anxiety. Dr. Lewis, she began, I've come across some chemical terms and equipment that I don't understand. Intrigued, he agreed to delve into the matter, sensing the gravity of her concerns. Some of these components, he started slowly, eyes narrowing, are quite advanced for a young student. He responded with a weighted pause. The potential reactions that can be achieved with these are... He hesitated, searching for words. Dangerous, at the very least. Stephanie gulped, realizing she might need to involve higher authorities in this matter. The secrecy surrounding his project became palpable, raising more concerns for Stephanie. She remembered Alex, an old schoolmate, with a knack for all things digital. Explaining the situation over coffee, she handed him the list of terms and some screenshots of Timmy's conversations with Chemister. When Stephanie first approached Timmy with her concerns, he reacted defensively. You don't understand, Steph, he exclaimed. This is groundbreaking science. The pure passion and belief in his voice were evident, but so was a hint of desperation. After hours of gentle coaxing and assurances of her support, Timmy finally broke down. He recounted how Chemester had detailed a vision of a world-changing experiment, one that Timmy, in his innocence, believed could benefit humanity. The materials Timmy was working with had dual purposes, both beneficial and harmful. It became clear that Chemister's intentions leaned heavily towards the latter. Stephanie walked into the local police station. She detailed everything, from Timmy's initial involvement with Chemister to Alex's dark web revelations. But as she unveiled the documented evidence, they now realized the gravity of the situation. The local precinct was a flutter with activity, with officers handing over all the evidence Stephanie had provided. The agents, Stephanie and Alex huddled in makeshift war rooms, drawing up strategies and chasing leads to locate and apprehend Chemister. As the net around Chemister tightened, a surprising call came through. Interpol agents from Europe provided intelligence suggesting that Chemister might not be a solitary actor. Preliminary investigations linked him to multiple incidents across Europe and Asia. As days turned to weeks, a multi-pronged effort was initiated. Digital forensics experts, hailing from top federal agencies, poured over terabytes of data, hunting for any breadcrumb that might lead to Chemister. A breakthrough arrived when an encrypted chat log revealed coordinates to a secluded facility in the outskirts of town. 
Preliminary drone surveillance showcased a large, isolated complex, surrounded by high walls and fortified gates. Bypassing the outer defenses, agents found themselves inside a sprawling, sophisticated lab. Row upon row of computers blinked in the semi-darkness, each running complex algorithms. Inside the lab's deeper chambers, agents found evidence of multiple experiments in various stages of progress. Some setups hinted at the creation of harmful chemical agents, while others seemed to be focused on bioengineering. In a dimly lit corner office, agents finally cornered a figure who matched Camaster's expected profile. He was apprehended without resistance, his cold, calculating eyes betraying no emotion. While the capture brought a sense of relief, many felt that the real challenge, deciphering his true intentions and connections, was just beginning. Inside a secure federal facility, Camaster was methodically interrogated. The man was highly educated, with credentials from top global institutions. Recognizing Timmy's vulnerability, the possibility of other vengeful associates of Chemister retaliating against Timmy couldn't be overlooked. The courtroom was packed each day, its atmosphere thick with anticipation. Timmy's testimony was heart-wrenching, detailing his interactions with Chemister and the manipulations he'd experienced. Stephanie spoke powerfully about her discoveries and the journey that led to Camaster's capture. After days of intense deliberations, the jury returned with their verdict, guilty on all counts. The judge, emphasizing the gravity of Chemister's crimes and the lasting trauma inflicted upon his victims, handed down a life sentence without the possibility of parole. The courtroom, filled with mixed emotions, witnessed justice being served, even though many felt that the scars would remain for generations. In the aftermath, Timmy and Stephanie found themselves increasingly reliant on each other's company. The trials they had endured solidified an unbreakable bond between them. Board meetings were convened, and a comprehensive digital safety curriculum was introduced. Students were taught about the perils of unsupervised online interactions, the importance of privacy, and recognizing manipulative tactics. In addition, new monitoring systems were installed in computer labs, ensuring safer virtual environments for students.